for a month or so. That's because the debate has shifted firmly onto the economy. Matters much closer to home. Both sides of politics need to find big savings to spend to uh, to fund their election commitments. But where will those savings come from? Tax increases, cuts to superannuation, cuts to services. Well, to discuss this, I'm joined by my panel today. Labor MP Graham Perrett and Liberal MP Paul Fletcher, thanks for joining us today. Uh, first to income tax. Wayne Swan didn't want to rule this out this morning, uh, a potential for increases to income tax. He did a radio interview on Radio National. Let's just hear some of the exchange. I, I don't, in the lead up to any budget, Fran, this year or in any of my five budgets, uh, go into that sort of you know, rule in, rule out routine, and I'm not doing it today. Later this morning, though, he released a statement saying that the proposition of this question is utterly ridiculous and absurd. The government's record on personal income taxes couldn't be more clear. And then later on in the morning, Tony Abbott gave his own assurance when he held a news conference at Queanbeyan, just outside of Canberra. I absolutely guarantee to the Australian people absolutely guaranteed to the Australian people uh, that the tax burden will be less under a coalition government. We will fund uh, tax cuts and benefit increases without a carbon tax and uh, we're looking at sensible, intelligent expenditure reductions. We're looking at uh, eliminating unnecessary expenditure that will enable us to provide a genuine tax relief to the Australian people, not simply carbon tax compensation. So, Graeme Perrett, first to you. Uh, Wayne Swan says, make no mistake, the only party advocating an increase to income tax is Tony Abbott's Liberals. So where will the money come from? Well, obviously the budget calculations are something that the Treasurer is a lot more uh, across than me. So they, uh, we, we've made the commitment in terms of finding savings. Some difficult decisions will be made. I mean, thankfully, we're, we're a party that was able for three budgets in a, load to, uh, in a row to deliver uh, tax cuts to people, uh, $47 billion, so that, you know, every, every Australian basically had an extra $2,100 in their, in their wallet, which is a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, it, it is a, a tight environment at the moment. We've got some difficult negotiations going on, but I'm uh, I'm very positive, very positive that we'll we'll make sure that the save, that all our promises are properly costed. And you're absolutely certain that uh, none of those income tax cuts will be clawed well, back. Look, you'd be the bravest government in the world to um, to uh, to be. Uh, in the lead up, what are we, nine, seven months out from an election, I think that would be uh, the bravest government in the world to, to uh, raise taxes, income taxes in the lead up. The reality is we've got an opposition that's committed to doing just that by cutting that tax free threshold. We tripled it up to 18,200. They're uh, guaranteed 3.7 million uh, lower paid Australians that they'll have a tax hike. That's their commitment. Oh. You know, but I'll let Paul speak for yeah, himself. Well, let, let's hear from, from Paul Fletcher on that. This. Uh, is under the mining tax because that uh, that tripling of the tax-free threshold was meant to be funded by the mining tax. We'll get more about the, f the, the funding from the mining tax a little bit later, but that is something of a, an increase to, to tax. Well, point one, mm -hmm. we're being very clear and upfront with the Australian people about what we're going to do. Point two, just look at the track records of the two parties over Good time. Idea. When Good the idea. Howard government was in power, we... Uh, got the budget under control, we delivered surpluses, and what we're saying to the Australian people is that we intend to get the budget under control again. By contrast, you have Wayne Swan, who uh, told us he was going to get the bu budget back to surplus. He's admitted he can't do it, and this government is now uh, out of control in terms of their finance finances. It's been deficit after deficit, and they're scrabbling around looking for every possible source of revenue. They've been, uh, they've been putting, well, as far as Labor's concerned, a tax increase uh, constitutes savings. That's, that's, what, that's what That is what we have, okay, okay. What we have seen the Labor time. Party constantly claim. We now know that they're desperate to try and get money out of superannuation. And they seem to have forgotten 
This is a really important point. They seem to have forgotten what the long-term purpose of superannuation is. Superannuation is intended to be a tax-preferred savings vehicle so that people have an incentive to save for their retirement. At the moment, we're hearing a lot of focus on the value of the tax concessions. What we're not hearing is the focus on the budget, ben the long-term benefits of having a retirement savings system. Look, we'll, we'll get deeper into super in a moment and I'll get your response to that, Graeme. But, but first, just just on that uh, that tax free threshold you said that you're being upfront and open so uh, do you admit then that obviously scrapping this tax th free threshold is is a, an upping of of the taxes for, for the, lowest uh, paid. Uh, the lowest paid workers about 6 million Australians according to no, the let's, treasurer let's let's just be clear that that was uh, effectively a piece of window dressing which was uh, came in as a part of the overall arrangements with the introduction of the carbon tax. We've been clear about what we intend to do with the carbon tax. We're going to get rid of it, and that is the uh, centrepiece and everything of is our approach. With it. And we're, we're very clear about our approach here, and we are the party that has a credible record that when we say this is what we're going to do, we do it. Okay, Graham Perrett, it, it was meant to be funded by, uh, you know, the, the, the mining tax, but there's, there's no money coming in from the mining yeah. tax. So, you know, is going into debt the best way well, look, the, to fund there is money this sort of thing? In. There's 126 million in out of those two quarters that we wouldn't have got. And the reality is the MRRT... That, that won't that, go anywhere near funding no, no, I, these I, I know, things. I know, I, know, I, 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 I know, I know. But uh, obviously I'm optimistic about the, the way spot prices are heading for iron ore and coal. So that's good news so that, that I'm sure so Paul will celebrate. to the tune of $1.8 billion. That's optimistic. However, these are good things to do. To say to 3.7 million Australians, uh, well, for a start, remove 1 million people out of the tax system for a start, uh, which is a great thing. Yeah, the money that they would have they would have paid in getting their taxes sorted, uh, and that 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 more money in their pocket is good for retailers, etc. And to say it's window dressing, you know, I, I know childcare workers that to say to them three, four, five hundred dollars is just window dressing would break their heart. These no, are people no, that are battling. These people are battling, are battling, and anything we can do to help them is a good thing. So I'm. I'm very proud about the Labor commitment to it. Now, in terms of how we do the funding, obviously there'll, there'll be some. Uh, that's a, a, a bit of a headache for for Minister Wong and and the, and the Treasurer. But I've got a lot of faith in their capacity to find it, and also a lot of faith in the mining industry that is is actually starting to get some good returns on their uh, our minerals uh, uh, overseas. You wanted to respond. To that? Well, the point about the window dressing is simply this: if you've got a compensation arrangement for a carbon tax and you remove the carbon tax, then people are going to be in the same position. That, that, is, that is the essential... This is the, uh, different income so, so, so what about then, you know, you, you said, Graham Perrett, that the government would need to find other revenue streams. So what about superannuation? Or, or savings. Or savings. savings. Yeah, yeah. But superannuation seems like it's on the, on the table. So are we talking about taking away some of the superannuation of wealthier Australians to fund some of these, these tax cuts for not so wealthy Australians? Well, look, I bit my tongue a minute ago when Paul was speaking, when he started to lecture me for a minute about superannuation, because we are the party of superannuation, the Labor Party. You voted against it. You voted and against it. In this 43rd Parliament, you voted against it. Now, we, we have now we've had a commitment from... Let's keep it on the here and here. now. We, we've, uh, we have a, a shadow treasurer who's committed as far as I can understand, he flip-flopped a couple of times, but he's committed to changing that tax-free threshold, uh, the uh, the contribution from nine to twelve. And he's com he's committed to 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 keeping that as, in as place. He back to that. So I thought. I well, thought he he's, tweeted. Cl he's clarified a few a few times that that, that will remain. Yeah, that, that, that that is a nine to twelve. Okay, sorry, I, I, I'd heard two contradictory things from the shadow treasurer. I saw one in question time, and he tweeted one, so I, I didn't realise that was the case. Because we are the party of superannuation. Now, in terms of what we're looking at, obviously that's uh, that as you heard from the treasurer, he doesn't rule anything in, he doesn't rule anything out. Uh, otherwise, the media get in a frenzy about what might not actually be the case. So, uh, obviously, the, the the reality is we've got over a. Quarter uh, you know, uh, a quarter of a trillion dollars, uh, uh, more than that, uh, in managed funds. Managed funds. One point five trillion. One point five trillion. So, and that's that's basically primarily a labour initiative, uh, giving a, a good income stream for people when they come to retire. Uh, I, I know there's a bit of a fear campaign being run by, by Paul to, at the moment. To take off the top well, I don't think I, I agree with Paul that it, uh, super is something uh, to be put away for the longer term. Now, if people are taking advantages of our super savings 
policy uh, to to hide um, some you know or to shuffle some income distribution around well then obviously we would be looking at that that's that's what good governments mm -hmm. do you know that's why you know tax lawyers but, but that's, have, have that's jobs not, that's not really the issue here I mean uh, Graham's trying to shift this into which party is for super, which party is against super. That is not the position. Well, we both parties super. support super. What well, you, you have seen is that the party that is claimed to be the party of superannuation, Labor, is the party of taxing superannuation. Where they increased taxes on superannuation for high income earners last year and there are now very well sourced uh, suggestions that there will be increases on tax for superannuation at the next budget. Now well, the, consequence of, the consequence of that is that you reduce confidence in the superannuation system, you make it harder for people to save for their retirement, and you actually undermine the original policy intention. And why does that happen? It's because it's a government that has lost control of the budget, Rubbish. lost control Rubbish. of the fiscal position, how, how, how will and you, then how will is in a, needs to scrabble around desperately to find tax revenue to fill gaps. And that's what's going on, and long-term policy objectives go out the window when that occurs. Uh, Graham was talking before about optimism about the mining tax perhaps bringing in more revenue in the future and, and it's not just Labor that's saying that, there are, there are other respected mines that are, that are saying that perhaps it, it will bring in more. So you're getting rid of the mining tax but keeping the contribution in place. So where will that money come from? Look, we are obviously looking at uh, the total budget position and we are the party that has the track record of delivering on our budgetary commitments. Highest we, 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 government we will in the history have of Australia, the Howard government, two consecutive occasions. The highest taxing government in any, Australia. Anybody who, anybody who, who believes anybody who believes the Labor Party has a credible position as a low tax but party knows fact, nothing Paul. about you're not economic fact. history and nothing about political okay. history well, in Australia. I'm just if, if, if we want to have a political battle about which is the low tax party, I can tell you but it's not the Labor Party. I want to talk about this other policy today that was released in the Daily Telegraph. A coalition draft discussion paper so it's not official policy yet but talking about building as many as 100 dams uh, around Australia to stimulate a food bowl in, in agriculture and the rest uh, but uh, suggestions that this would cost 30 billion dollars so again where, where would that money well, come first from? First of all let's be clear about the process and then secondly mm -hmm. let's be clear about the policy direction so process this is a discussion paper. The coalition has had a task force working on dams for uh, a year, more than a year. Uh, they've uh, had nine separate side, site visits. They've been all around Australia. The facts are well known that Australia uses about 6% of its water. Uh, the world average is around 9%, so that's the US level. So if we were able to make better use of some of our water, there would be significant economic and social benefits. You could feed a lot more people. And there's a range of other reasons why it makes sense to look at the question of does Australia need more dams. Now there hasn't been a major dam built in Australia for 20 years. So point one, the process here is a discussion paper that is out there seeking responses, seeking comment. Included in that is a, a whole range of suggestions that have been put to us and we're seeking comment and response on that. That is part of our dialogue as we develop policy. Now the Labor Party's attitude obviously is policy gets de developed uh, inside the Canberra Beltway, we know best. Our attitude is very different. We want to That's consult rubbish. with people all around Australia who have an interest in this issue and there is a lot of interest in this issue. Uh, so there's a good policy basis for having a look at the question of Where's could the money coming do from? Do we do we need to look Sorry, at having no, more no, do job, we need David, to have to look at having more dams? And then secondly, we have a process mm. with a discussion well, paper. Uh, that is going in that direction, but uh, clearly is not. There, is there a problem, Gr Graham Perrett, to, to, to have a discussion about no, it? No, definitely. It's, uh, and we, we are a broad church, lots of ideas. That's how policy uh, works through. We have a national it, it's conference. It's not an official policy, no, so no, they don't but, need to, but let's, they don't let's, need let's, to say where the money is coming from. Let's get some facts on the board, uh, some facts on the table. I'm from Queensland. Yesterday, the Queensland Premier got rid of the requirement for uh, new houses in Queensland to collect the water off the roof. You know, 
A lot of water, a lot of new houses have a lot of roofs. We can do a lot of good things to collect water. So what's the Liberal National Party do? Get rid of that. What do we have here today? A thirty billion dollar. Uh, where is it, where uh, this, 30 this billion is your number figures. Come from? Your look, figures. Look, in, the, in the discussion paper, you, it, it mentions thirty billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, so you and, need to go to and, talk. To, and, you and need to talk to the person who. Yeah, yeah, and there's also. a there's a massive difference between a set of proposals put to us by a whole range of people. Um, and you're trying to extrapolate this into well, no, some kind of figures, commitment. The, the that figures we in your discussion right. paper. Gentlemen, we're out of time. You've got to get to question time. Thanks very much for your Thanks thoughts today. We're going to take